good morning youtube and welcome back to my channel it is the 21st of august and i am officially on the dot today eight weeks out from the british finals which is mind-blowing so i thought i'd pick up my camera today and film a little bit of a day in the life um, I wanted to chat this morning about my morning routine um, and later on in this video I will go over my evening routine. Not that it's anything exciting or out of the ordinary or even that you will have any kind of... Like, it's not that exciting basically but we're going to go over it anyway because that's what we do here on YouTube. So it's actually 20 past 6 already. Um, I had a bit of a lion this morning, which is, I don't tell, well, basically I can't have a lion on Monday to Thursday because it's a check-in day, it's too busy, I need to be up at 5am. But on the weekends, I can actually get away with getting up a little bit later, don't need to get up at 5am. So I actually got up at quarter to six this morning um, and I've already done a few bits. I have actually weighed myself, so I weighed myself this morning which if you follow me on my last prep you'll know i didn't weigh myself for months because basically i was weighing myself every day and the scales literally didn't move a pound for like three weeks and dan was like get off the scales just get off the scales and when i jumped back on them again i'd lost like fucking loads of weight i can't even remember what it was but i'm pretty sure it was over a stone so um not that not skep not the stepping on the scales and making me hold fat by the way it was more like i think it was more like the stress thing i was stressing myself out with it um so yeah i'm not getting on them all the time in this prep either but i did have a cheeky look this morning and i was 125.6 pounds which to put that in perspective for you i weighed myself on the 7th of june right so on the 7th of June, I weighed myself, which was five days out from the from the PCA first timers. I was 123 pounds. Oh, you can't even see it, but basically I was 123 pounds and I'm now 125.6. So I'm two and a half pounds right now heavier than I was five days out. So not my lightest, but arguably pretty close, which is fucking crazy. No wonder I'm starting to feel like shit. <laughs> anyway, um, so I weighed myself, I washed my face, put moisturiser on my face, brushed my teeth with my new exciting fucking toothbrush, which I paid out my ass for because it was baby pink and that's literally the only reason. <laughs> uh, I've got my water, which I, this isn't actually what it is by the way, but I'm going to put squash in it. I'm going to put... this in it which isn't Vimto I know but basically I was carrying too much shopping the other day walking back from Sainsbury's and I was like I can't be asked to also have to walk back with Vimto so I'm gonna go with this which isn't actually that nice but you know two three four five six I think that's how many I put in last time so I like to drink at least two and a half litres, this is one and a half litres of water before my first meal and before, especially before I train at the weekend. Um, and then I've got my oat milk, 70 millilitres in my little cup, which I will microwave and then I will make my coffee with. And I make my coffee, it's an espresso virtue, I think it's called, or virtue, or virtue, rah, rah, rah. Fuck knows. Um, and I have the cookie or the vanilla flavour. People ask me which flavours I have. They're the two flavours I have. And then I'll sit down and I will start my work for the day. Which actually, I don't have that much to do today because I had my jab yesterday. You know, the jab, the devil. And um, I've heard and I've seen a lot of clients basically just get battered for 24 hours they just feel it just they just feel like shit right for a whole day i refuse to feel like shit okay so i have push today push doesn't wait for anything and that 
does ache a little bit. So basically I've been taking paracetamol like every six hours since it happened yesterday. Luckily, I don't feel that bad yet. But I did have it yesterday like midday. So we will see. But basically what I'm trying to say is I did a lot of my work yesterday just in case it does put me on my ass. Um, but yeah, we will see. This video might be, might, might make a turn, but for now, still gonna do side raises. Just work through the pain in it. Anyway, sit down, do some work, and I'll catch you at my first meal. Also, I will always write my to-do list out the night before. So, I'll go to, before I go to bed, I'll basically make sure everything's ticked off on my to-do list, and if it's not, then obviously I'll move it into the next day. So that when I sit down, I'm ready, and I know what I need to do. By the way, this is the, I'm still using this, which is the salted caramel syrup. Mm. There is nothing better than that first taste of coffee. So my admin for the morning is actually done and it's only just gone 7am. So I think I'm gonna go and do my cardio now. Um, and get that out of the way. So half an hour on the Stairmaster. Since my last video, I've actually changed the gym that I'm doing cardio at because the gym group, which is where I was before, the manager came over to me while I was on the stairs and said, oh, you're not allowed, you're not allowed in here with socks on. And I said, not even to do the stairs. And he said, no, you're not allowed, you have to wear shoes. He was actually really rude. Um, and I was like, okay, so and then I just said to him, I'm going to cancel my membership um, and put it on my Instagram actually and lots of people replied saying that that's not even a rule in the gym group So I don't know whether that was little man syndrome or what but anyway, I cancelled my membership there Actually ended up getting a membership at Better Gym, which I think is a chain and uh, it's literally so much closer It's like a two minute walk down the road got a sauna they've got a spa they've got a swimming pool they've got a studio because that was another thing that the gym didn't have I didn't even think because I, I didn't know that their studio is on the gym floor and um, they haven't got like an exclusive studio so he thought that me uh, me doing Stairmaster in the socks was bad wait until I got in my heels and was prancing around his gym so um, yeah basically I've changed gyms to better gym so I'm gonna go there now do my Stairmaster and then come home and have meal one. past 10 um, we just did a one-to-one -one release for coaching spaces and it blows my fucking mind every single time it never gets old I just can't believe how quickly they go like I just it, 20 spaces gone within two minutes which is honestly I don't like to think about it too much because it does actually like overwhelm me but um, forever grateful and just really looking forward to having these new ladies on board that was this morning crazy crazy times i'm now on the way to croydon kings um which isn't the usual kings i train at it's a little bit further out but i'm going to train push there because i love that i love that croydon kings it's so nice and where i don't work as much on the weekends um, i have the time to drive there plus i'm going to see hannah and rebecca um because they're there for a posing session with ria gale so yeah but yeah I, i'm not going to film this workout i am going to film well i have already filmed yesterday's back and hamstring workout 
which I'm going to do a voiceover for and give you guys some form tips. So hopefully you're able to take something valuable from this video. Enjoy the video. Good morning, YouTube. It is Friday morning. I am about to go and hit the gym and do a pull session, a basically hamstring and back session, which I had been doing down in Cornwall in Devon. Um, so nothing's really changing with my split now that I've moved. I'm just adjusting it to Kings. But I wanted to give a bit of a in-depth a voiceover of this uh, workout. I have prepped my supplements for the session which is the usual EAAs from Anova Farm in the watermelon and also today I'm having half a scoop because I can't deal with the anxiety of having too much caffeine um, half a scoop of the Naughty Boy Menace in strawberry and mango I fucking love this pre it's such a good pre the flavor is amazing the focus is fucking great and it's in between that and and um, MV pre, you know, that's also a very good pre workout. So that's the setup. Yeah, anyway, I'm gonna shut the fuck up. Make sure you like this video if you haven't already because it really does help me out. If you like this video, it basically helps me reach more people. So we are eight weeks out tomorrow and I want to document this prep just like I did my first prep with really regular uploads. So help me because right now my videos are doing shit. <laughs> Not gonna lie to you, like my YouTube videos are doing terrible. So help a girl out, motivate me to make more uploads by clicking like, clicking subscribe. It means the world. Look, don't ask me why I have this monkey in my car. Well, you can if you want. Basically my friend Nia bought this for me and it's like my little mascot. I don't have a child, don't worry. See you in the gym okay guys i am going to do a little voiceover for this back and hamstring session i'm not going to talk about sets and reps and numbers i'm going to talk a little bit more about form and hopefully give you some pointers and tips for your own sessions so first of all we started with the close grip pull down so i'm a big fan of this exercise just because the variation of having your hands close like that I feel like it really allows you to get the most from it. So as you pull down and as you pull through your elbows, which is what you should be pulling through, um, it does, if you keep your elbows tucked in, it really does allow you to shorten the lat at the bottom. So as I'm sort of driving through my elbows, I'm keeping my elbows tucked in and I'm really trying to achieve that shortening at the bottom. And also in terms of coming up to the top, just make sure you're not coming all the way up so that you start loading that that sort of weight through the shoulders so a lot of the time i see people coming too far up and all of the weight just gets pulled into their shoulder so that was the close grip pull down also just side note on those i do use the straps just because it helps with the grip so moving on we did the pullover machine so i'm a big fan of this machine but I do know a lot of gyms don't have it so if your gym doesn't have this machine you can do a dumbbell pullover or a cable straight arm pullover um, which does achieve the same movement pattern but again pointer on this and kind of pointer on any pulling movement that's that's this variation we're trying to shorten the lat at the bottom and we're trying to lengthen the lat at the top so yeah Again, making sure you're not coming too far up that you're pulling through the delts unnecessarily, but you are trying to get that lengthening position. And as you pull down, same thing applies. Keep the elbows tucked in and think about shortening the bottom of the back, the lower lat, as much as you possibly can. This shouldn't be putting any pressure in your triceps. You really should be, look at those facials, thinking about shortening at the bottom um, and that's kind of my biggest tip for that, like because there's not too many exercises that you can do that really sort of allows you to think and shorten the lower lat like that. So dumbbell pullover, really good one, or obviously pullover machine for 
that lower lapped uh, portion of the back. So then we move on to single leg leg curl. So obviously if you don't have a standing lying leg curl, you can do this on a seated or a lying, it's exactly the same. So my biggest tip for leg curl in general is dig your hips into the pad more. If you're finding that you're getting lower back pain with this exercise, it's because you're trying to move the weight with your lower back rather than moving it with your hamstring. So lighten the fucking load and really do make sure that you're pushing your hips into the pad because that's gonna allow you to move the weight with your hammy rather than move it with your lower back. So that's kind of my main tip for the leg curl machine. But also with this and any sort of single arm, single leg working sets, you should not be able to go from right to left. If you can just go straight from right into left or left into right, you're not working hard enough in your first set. So just something also to note, you know, <laughs> like you should technically be resting in between right and left if your intensity is there. So moving on. Um, we did the dumbbell RDL. I kind of rotate between barbell RDL, straight leg deadlift, um, just kind of depending. I'm, I am going to try and get into a bit more of a routine. Anyway, I like the dumbbell RDL because there's just something about it that for me personally, I can connect a lot with my hammies. And I think it's because it allows me to sit that dumbbell slightly um, to the side of my thigh rather than bang on to the front. So big fan of these um, and my best pointers for this is first of all keep a neutral spine and make sure you're pushing your hips back. So a lot of the time I see people at the bottom of this movement they're still staring at themselves in the mirror. So try and make sure that you keep a neutral spine throughout and that you're not coming too low that we're putting again you know dragging this through the shoulders. Um, we should be sort of getting to middle of shin and then as we drive up we don't want to sort of push the hips too far forward so make sure that you are contracting the glutes at the top but not so much that we start loading into the lower back and pushing the hips too far forwards so this was actually my top set of 42s which I was really happy with but unfortunately I didn't wrap my strap properly and um, I lost my grip, so I could definitely do more reps on here. But yeah, I think that there's a fine line between failure on these. These headphones are doing my nut in now. My head's too small. Um, there's a fine line between failure and with good form and failure with bad form. So just be aware of that with your RDLs, because obviously it is, you know, that it's it's a big exercise. It's a big compound. So I finished my <laughs> pull workout, which makes no sense with glutes. Um, obviously, you know, it's arguably not back or hamstring, but I do need to work on my glutes. But I wanted to include this because this is a cluster set. So the idea is that you put a working weight on and you do sort of a certain amount of reps. Then you take a 20 second break and then you go in again. So it's basically one massive set, which mentally I find a lot easier to go into at the end of a session. So I think I did sort of like seven, six, seven, six on these. This is sped up, by the way. Um, and it just, yeah, it allows you to get a lot of reps in, um, but it's not as taxing mentally on you if that makes sense so obviously if you're looking to do more of a back workout then I would suggest doing this with a row exercise but I do my row exercises on an upper day so yeah that's basically my full workout hopefully you're able to take some tips from that I will try and do um, a few more of these sort of voiceovers with simple tips like not anything overwhelming I like to keep things simple you know um, and I think that a lot of the time with social media there's all these people trying to fling their dicks around using all these crazy words that no one knows what they even mean so hopefully that was helpful um, also finished my session with some posing which I'm trying to do now at the end of every session and then also in a studio on my rest days because it's the fucking finals you know it's going to be stacked everyone there is going to be showing up so you can't get too much posing practice in and I have a lot of sessions booked in now for the next eight weeks to kind of really work on this because although I'm happy with it I'm not really happy with it so yeah anyway I'll let you go back to the video but there it is 
right. Mmm. Gone for normal Pepsi Max today, the original. I've been loving the cherry recently, but I thought I'd go for a change today. Literally addicted to Pepsi. It's actually an issue at this point, but I'm just ignoring it basically. I think I'm on prep. I'm allowed a Pepsi every day. Yeah. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed the workout footage and hopefully there was some useful tips on there for you all. Uh, it's currently 3 p.m. now and obviously I just trained at King's in Croydon. It was actually a really good session. It was so nice to see Hannah. It was so nice to see Bex because she is pretty close to her shows now as well. Um, saw Lauren, she's close to her show, saw Dan, so it was just so nice to like walk in there and Helen and just see so many familiar faces from Instagram and yeah, I just know that moving here was such a, such a good idea because it's going to allow me to see people who I have connected with over the internet. Anyway, I wanted to wrap up this video with just another little bit of a prep update because since my last video uh, we have made, well we haven't made any changes to anything but I'm now doing four low carb days, one high carb day. So before it was two low, one high and now it's four low, one high. We are happy with the way that things are moving um, but Dan has actually said like in the last check in that I sent to him on Thursday he said that he just wants to get ahead so basically what we're aiming to do is just be ready a little bit early so that when we do get ready we have more than just a week to pull back on things um, because what you don't want to do and I've said this before on videos is diet into a show because if you have to diet into a show you're never going to look your best because you look dieted, you know, you look depleted, you look kind of scraggy, um, where actually if you do all of that shit before, so with a prep, especially if you are trying to get condition, which is difficult for women, it's, it's hard for women to get condition, it's harder for women to get the sort of condition than it is for men, um, so trying to get that condition, it comes with just looking a bit shit for a bit, uh, you just look very dieted, you know, so hopefully the plan of action will be that I do that like a good couple of weeks before the show um, so that actually I can come into the show looking a little bit fresher uh, and hopefully eating a little bit more food. So that's exciting. It's obviously nice that we're in a position where we are able to kind of plan that because um, obviously in my last prep, let's be real, I did start my last prep quite heavy. I had a lot of body fat to lose. Whereas now, I'm not saying I was fat, I mean in the grand scheme of things with this sport, I had a lot of body, body fat to lose. Whereas now, we don't really have that. So, yeah, I am happy. I am happy and uh, Dan's pointed it out and he is right. Like, compared to last time, I'll see if I can pull a comparison up of where I was at last time this many weeks out and where I am this many weeks out this time. <laughs> um, basically, compared to last prep, my legs are in line, kind of, with my upper body. So last time my upper body came in quite quick, um, but my legs were still quite soft until right at the end. Whereas this time it seems that my legs are playing ball a little bit more, which is a really good sign. Um, and obviously only being two and a half pounds heavier than five days out, which I said earlier in this video, which blows my mind. Hopefully, fingers fucking crossed, it means I've actually managed to put on a little bit of muscle in that very, very short period of time that I had in between shows. I'm not saying that that was an optimal time to grow. Well, it, in a way it was because it was a rebound. So that was another reason, actually. Sorry, this, this video is going to be really long now. Um, that was another reason on why I wanted to nail post-show or reverse dieting or the rebound or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, that's why it was so important for me to do that efficiently because I knew that that... that time period when you come out of the back end of a show and you give your body more food 
that is a fucking optimal time to start, you know, working hard and pushing things. So I feel like I really did that. Like I can happily say that I really, really pushed myself with my training in the last eight weeks or whatever it was. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, when I'm looking at the scales, being two and a half pounds heavier now, obviously I'm nowhere near as lean yet. There may be some muscle. I feel like I'm just trying to convince myself here, but we'll never, we'll, we won't know until um, we get into stage condition, which is exciting, isn't it? Like this is the beauty of bodybuilding is that I'm not doing it to win, but I'm doing it to come back better than what I looked like at the qualifiers. So, hmm, very, very exciting. Also, I thought I would just side note in here because I keep meaning to touch on it. I keep forgetting to touch on it on a video. My menstrual cycle, my period. Sorry guys, if you're watching this. Um, I know a lot of females like to know and I feel like it's important to show, share everything. So I did try to get my period back, you know, that was something that I really did want to do in between shows. I really wanted to get my period back. Unfortunately, I didn't get it back. Um, I mean, I definitely felt hormonal, and I've said that on a couple of videos in between the shows. I felt my symptoms a lot more, you know. I was feeling more watery. I was feeling more moody. My lifts were sort of dipped, you know. My strength had been dipping at the same sort of time in the month that I would normally get a bleed. Um, but, unfortunately, I didn't actually get a period in between shows. So, obviously, once the finals is done... Um, the aim will be to get that back as soon as we can really so yeah that's the reality of prepping as well and that's the reality of being a, a low body fat percentage um, and I've said this on a video before but it's what comes with it you know and I was I was aware of that before I started a bodybuilding prep that um, you know it's not particularly healthy for a female um, but with that being said I definitely have felt very very healthy in between shows you know there wasn't there hasn't been any point actually in this whole process that I have been questioning my health and worrying about my health Dan like Dan is obviously an amazing coach he is somebody who would never push anything on me he would never ever put my health at risk and I know that so yeah I feel like for what it is <laughs> for how unhealthy it can get it has been a relatively healthy, I mean, it isn't healthy, but you know, it, it, for, for some of the horror stories that you hear out there, um, I'm, I'm blessed, I suppose, that I'm in such good hands coaching wise, um, and that I guess I'm aware of that. I don't know. Anyway, I feel like I'm chatting shit now, so I'm going to wrap up the video here. I hope that you guys did enjoy it. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like the sort of video where I do the voiceover and hopefully give you guys some tips, because um, I will try and do those more often leading up into the show. And yeah, that's the update. That's the update. Eight weeks out today. We are eight weeks out today, and I'm very excited. Speak soon.